Early in a child's life, they come face to face with a mirror for the first time, and this, for French psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan, marks a monumental event he calls the mirror stage. At around six months old, the child knows no boundaries between itself and the outside world. The lack of control of their limbs and their speech, their ability to create worlds with inanimate toys and impart life onto teddy bears, their ability to control their mother with their screams and their cries. All of this combined shows that they have no solid, constrained identity, no set idea of where their body ends and the world begins. Their identity is fragmented and unconstrained. However, between the ages of 6 to 18 months, the child becomes fascinated by its image in the mirror as it offers a clear, concise, solid identity which the child can associate itself with. Their reflection provides them with a sense of unity and wholeness that was not possible before. As Sean Homer states in his book on Lacan, the sense of a unified self is acquired at the price of this self being an other, that is, our mirror image. In other words, the image we perceive outside of ourselves in the mirror is pleasant because it represents unity and wholeness. But it is not how we really feel on the inside. On the inside, we remain conflicted, confused and fragmented. And it is here at this moment of alienation and fascination with one's own image where the ego emerges. The ego, based upon images, can be said to be imaginary. As the child grows, the ego forms during the mirror stage, remains, and its function is to retain this illusion of wholeness and mastery that the mirror initially provided. Its function is to distract oneself from accepting the truth of their fragmentation. In modern society, it is easier than ever for the ego to perform this function as social media acts as a permanent mirror whereby one constantly monitors one's own image, how their image appears to others, whilst also offering ways to manipulate this image of oneself through the use of filters. By carefully selecting the images that one posts, one projects an image of themselves onto the internet which then stays there permanently. The photo containing the manipulated or carefully constructed image of oneself becomes timeless. It is a way of solidifying that image in time. The picture that represents one at their most attractive, when they are feeling their best, when they are happy, can be stored there and this image is what others see and hence how they think one is at all times, even though this is clearly not the case. A possible side effect of this is that our pleasurable moments become nullified as the moment itself is not appreciated as our attention is occupied with how to create a permanent image of this moment, one that we can share with others, rather than us being present in the moment itself. Posting on social media, the existence of filters, makeup and cosmetic surgeries all offer us a way to manipulate our image in a way to feel more complete whole and masterful over our image. In a world obsessed with image, it is easy to see why we worry so much about our online profile. It can easily turn into an obsession where we attend to our image on social media instead of attending to our internal feelings of fragmentation, loneliness and our insecurities. These symptoms are extremely common and an effort is being made to open up about them in more recent times. but it is much more common to see these feelings being repressed. And as we have said, one of the main ways that we repress these feelings is to work on portraying a very specific image, typically a perfected online image of ourselves, rather than attending to our internal feelings and being honest about how we really feel. A key insight made by Freud is that when our denial of something is most strong, that is precisely when we feel it the most, here, it being feelings of fragmentation and depression, loneliness, and so on. Perhaps this is one reason behind the huge amounts of people suffering with mental health issues in the 21st century. It is that we are surrounded by perfected images of influencers, and we attempt to create a perfect image of ourselves to replicate this. But this approach is unsustainable and creates a separation between our true selves and our projected images. A closely related result of this obsession with image is that many begin to centre their goals around image 
rather than genuine interior happiness and passion. It is common to see people pursue careers based solely upon what the final image will provide, not if they are genuinely curious in the subject or have a true passion for it. Although not always the case, this is more common with careers associated with a high income, where people force themselves to study these subjects and pursue a career in something they have absolutely no interest or curiosity in, which brings them no joy except for the potential money that it brings in. And the image that money can buy becomes the only motivation. Succeeding in a high paying career one has no passion for may bring in money and an image of wealth and hence success, but this can magnify feelings of fragmentation and disconnection as there is no drive, no curiosity and no passion for what one has dedicated a significant chunk of their life to. So there should be more to motivation than simply the prospect of wealth and enhancing one's own image. The priority should be pursuing a discipline that one has a genuine passion in and could study for decades, even centuries, without ever tiring of. So what can be done about this? The most important thing is cultivating awareness with respect to one's internal feelings and the ways in which we repress these feelings. It is incredibly important to just sit down by oneself every once in a while and to really ask oneself how you are feeling. Being honest with yourself, being honest with the ways in which you may repress those feelings that you don't like. Taking a break from social media often does a large amount of good in that it helps us to feel more in touch with ourselves as we are not constantly comparing ourselves to others and the perfected images that are posted on social media. Also, it means that we are not stressing over how to post a perfect picture of ourselves every time we do something new. It is quite refreshing to just be in the moment and let moments pass without trying to hold on to it every single time. Another thing to do is to question one's desires, particularly surrounding one's choice of study and career. If there is no passion there and one is just doing it for the image or to make others jealous about their wealth, then it is bound to end up in more feelings of fragmentation than one started with. Finally, it is important for one to have a positive body image if one is still going to use social media. Influencers on social media are paid to take the perfect photos and it is common for them to use filters, drugs, cosmetic surgery, etc. all to achieve this perfected look. Understanding that this is often the case and how Comparing oneself with these images can result in developing a hatred for one's own body is extremely important. It is good to work on your body and achieve a healthy physique, but not the hyper-realistic ideals that are seen on social media, and comparisons with these type of images are unhealthy and dangerous if one does not have a good positive view of their own body and fitness journey. A lot more can be said concerning this idea of body positivity and this may be discussed in more depth in a future video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video useful and do leave any questions or comments that you have down below. Thank you again and goodbye.